Hey everybody, this is uh, Eric Clark's Travel Videos and I'm in Istanbul, Turkey. And so I've been in Turkey for a while now. I was in Kusadasi for a while and Izmir for a while. Um, and I've spent the last couple of weeks in uh, Istanbul. And uh, this video is a little different. I want to tell you about a situation that happened to me um, that is uh, probably the worst experience I've ever had traveling. I've been traveling for about 15 years, and so this experience has uh, has changed my life for the rest of my life, and, uh, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, I was... Uh, I was going to go to the palace and, uh, and I got on the tram and I was headed that way and somebody came over and asked me about a stop and I talked to him and uh, his name was Pierre and uh, we just started talking and uh, he said he was from Paris and that he had just gotten there and, uh, and he asked me where I was going I said the palace and he said that, uh, that he was going to the palace too coincidentally and so we just pretty much hung together and so um we rode the rest of the tram together which is about 20 minutes we walked the mile to the palace for another 15 minutes uh, and we got to the palace entrance we went through the palace part of it together and then we were heading to there's three parts to the palace there's the palace the harem and the museum so we were heading to the museum side and he decided he wanted a coffee i didn't want a coffee and i just was going to go look at the pond and the courtyard and the whole nine yards so I went over to the, I was headed over that way and after, and, and just taking pictures, you know me, I take videos obviously. And so uh, he, uh, he I, I heard my name being called and so I turned and he was standing outside of the cafe. There's a little cafe inside the, the courtyard area. And uh, he called me over and so I went over there and he said that he'd bought me a coffee and that, uh, and so I went inside and there was a coffee sitting there and, uh, and I said, oh, you didn't have to buy me a coffee. And he said that, uh, no, it's okay. It was the least he could do, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he said uh, that if you don't want it, I could throw it away. Um, but he already ordered himself another one. And right about then somebody else walked over or the, the coffee person came over and handed him a coffee. Imagine like a Starbucks type scenario where they, you order and then you go to the end of the line and they put it on the, on the little countertop. And that was the exact same scenario. So I took the coffee, not expecting anything or not thinking anything, and I drank the coffee. Um, and I didn't drink all of it. There was a lot of, it was like a cappuccino. So there was a lot of foam and a lot of stuff in it. And it, it, it wasn't very good coffee to boot. And, uh, and so I didn't think anything of it. We decided it was time to go. We threw the coffee away or, or you know, threw the, the cups away and then headed off to the museum and we walked through the museum. After about uh, 15 or 20 minutes into the museum, I was really getting loopy. I was uh, just, you know, just feeling kind of lightheaded and like, like you just shot like three or four shots of tequila rapidly and then it was just kicking in, you know, after a while. And so uh, I didn't think anything of it. And he, he mentioned the same thing. He said, wow, my coffee's really strong. That's a lot of caffeine, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I, 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 I didn't think anything of it. Um, and so we uh, finished the museum and about the end of the museum, I was just tired and beat and exhausted. And I just wanted to lay down and go to sleep. I just was exhausted. I found myself stumbling. I found myself, uh, not walking right. I found myself kind of just like, literally like you were just drunk off your butt. Um, and so I didn't, you know, and again, I, I, I didn't put two and two together. Um, and so he said he needed a water and I was like, that's fine, I need to sit down anyway. And so I sat down and he went and got himself a water and, and came back and he had two waters and two desserts. And, uh, and so, uh, he said, here's the water. And he says, drink some more water, drink some more water. And, uh, um, and my mind again, I, I, it, 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 it's almost like you're there for five seconds and gone for five seconds, there for five seconds and gone for five seconds. And so it was like really discombobbled and I was really out of it. And, uh, and, and over the course of the next five minutes, he, he just kept encouraging me to drink the water, but I was really trying to get connected. I wanted to get connected so I could do my movie and my, 
my, because that's what I do, Eric Clark's travel videos. And, uh, and I wanted to get my pictures uploaded on their dime, not my dime. And I wanted to get my movie uploaded and going that way. Um, and uh, he just kept pushing the water. And, but, but I was really sidetracked with the phone. And so he said, well, hand me your phone and I'll get you connected. He said, I'm connected, let me get you connected. And so this never happens. I just handed him my phone and uh which is just beyond something eric does i don't give anybody my phone my son could ask me my my phone and i i don't give him my phone my mom could ask my phone and i don't give her my phone um so it was really out of the character of eric and so uh part of the getting connected was that it required your birth date and your last name and all your information and everything and so he said hand me your wallet I handed him my wallet um, and I had gone to the ATM before I had gotten on the tram because I had to pay rent that day. So I had over $2,000 in my wallet and uh, 2,000 lira probably I should say, probably closer to 2,500 lira. Um, but um, never in my life would I hand somebody my wallet, never, never. Um, and so again, I was just blacking out and, and coming back and, and I wasn't really coherent. I was really just beyond myself. I, I, I didn't know what was happening. I felt like I was like, like, like you were on the verge of passing out and, and that's the way it felt. And, uh, and I kept looking at him and I was wondering when he was going to get me connected because I was still trying to get connected and uh, he kept fussing with the phone and my wallet and everything else and then I looked over and I noticed that he had my credit cards and my driver's license in his hand. Um, and I looked back and I, it, it, it took me seconds to digest what I had just seen. And then I, I kind of realized that, that, that he had my phone and he had my wallet and he had my credit cards and my driver's license in his hand. And I, 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 I didn't even get alarmed or beyond what I normally would have. I, 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 I'm sure if I was, you know, on, on all fours and, and in, in my own mind, I would have confronted him and, and I would have pulled it back. But it took me seconds to digest this um, situation and what was happening. And so then finally, after, after I, I, what felt like five, 10, 15 seconds, I, I, I knew I had to get my, my driver's license. You know, the whole entire time he kept encouraging me to drink the water, drink the water, drink the water, drink the water. Um, I opened the cap of the water to drink the water and I, I don't know why, I just kept doing what he asked me to do, but I opened the cap of the water and I realized it didn't pop. I also realized it was a jar. Like when you put on a cap that isn't fully all the way or right, not, not correctly on and it kind of doesn't seal 100%. And I took a sip of the water and I, and I put it down and, and that took me time to digest that the cap wasn't on, that the lid was off, the lid was ajar and I just, I just wasn't on all fours. I put the, the water down and I, I looked over and again he still had my credit cards and stuff in his, wa in his hand. And, 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 I, and I think this probably took you know maybe 30 seconds maybe before I clicked and then I realized that that's my life in his hand. That, that if he takes my credit cards, he takes my wallet, he takes my driver's license, he takes all my money, then I'm in trouble. I'm in Istanbul, Turkey, and uh, it was a problem. And so I reached over and I, I grabbed my stuff and he's like, no, 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 I'll get you connected. And I'm like, no, 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 I want my stuff. And, 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 uh, and, and he said, no, no, I'll get you connected. And we started going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then I kind of was just really beyond myself, totally out of it. And, uh, but I wasn't letting my stuff go. And I looked over and I, I noticed people were watching us now. And, and I think he realized it too, because this cafe we were in, there was probably, you know, 20, 30, 40 people and, you know, couples and families and whatever, but they were, they were looking at us. And so he, uh, I, I wasn't letting him go. And he kept telling me to drink the water and I wasn't drinking the water. I wanted my stuff. And, uh, and so I finally pulled it from him. And he told me to drink some more water. And, and uh, so I, I put my stuff, my wallet, my credit cards, my driver's license on my lap in front of me. Um, and, uh, and I picked up the water. And again, my mind was just screaming at me, Eric, that lid was off, Eric, that cap was off, Eric, you're not right, Eric, something's wrong, Eric, there's a problem. And I was just, I, I, I wasn't even there. 
and uh, and again it's that five on and five off you were there for five seconds and off in la la land for another five seconds and so um, at this time the coffee had kicked in and I had to go to the bathroom and so I I just shoved the stuff in my wallet um, because I was gonna stand up and I didn't want all the stuff to fall down and so I put the stuff in the wallet and I shoved the, the phone in my pocket and the wallet in my pocket and I stood up and I, I couldn't even stand up. I tried to stand up once and I, and I didn't make it. And I tried to stand up again and I didn't make it. And the third time I stood up and I was just wobbling again, like you were beyond drunk. Um, and so finally I kind of gathered myself together a little bit. I looked around and people were, were certainly looking at me and, and, uh, um, and so I, I decided to make my way to the bathroom and the bathroom was, you know, about maybe 100 feet, 150 feet to the right. And so I, I started walking and I found myself listing. I, I was walking sideways and, and I was stumbling and I, I kind of was like leaning on pillars from here to there and, and on the table from here to there. And I, and I got to the bathroom and again, my head was just, I was, I was out of my mind. And I went to the bathroom and I, I, I didn't even hit the urinal. I was just that much of a mess. I found myself leaning up against the stall wall and struggling just to find some understanding of what was happening. And I, I, I stood there and, uh, and the guy next to me said something and I, I, I hope I didn't urinate on his feet. And uh, it was just painful. And I realized that there was a problem and I was in trouble. Uh, and I was in trouble in a big way. I was in trouble past what I'd ever experienced before in my life. I, I then uh, finished my bathroom event and went, went to the counter and I realized that he had my wallet. He had my credit cards and I pulled out my wallet and I, I, I looked at the credit cards and they weren't even in the right spots. I looked for my driver's license. It wasn't even in the right spot. And so I put them where they were supposed to be. And then I started counting the money on the bathroom counter. And there are people coming in and out of this bathroom and a guy looked at me and he said something in some language I don't understand. And I, I had, you know, thousands of lira on the counter. And I was just counting hundreds and hundreds. And, you know, and I, I realized then, too, that I was not okay. Um, and I, uh, I put my wallet, I put all the money back in my wallet. And I put the wallet back in my pocket. And I checked my phone. I checked my wallet. I checked my change. I checked my keys. I checked everything. My watch was okay. Everything was okay. And I was just not okay. But the alarm had gone off. I was unsafe. I was in danger. I was in trouble. This was going to be... Um, a horrendous event um, if I didn't fix this immediately and so I, I I walked out of the bathroom and I was still stumbling I almost tripped once and uh, going up the stairs and I went back and I I went back to the chair and he was there and he's like he had my water bottle and he was handing it to me drink some water drink some water you don't look well you don't look well drink some water drink some water um, and I said no I want to go to the harem real quick um, I'm not feeling very good let me go to the harem and I'll be back and so I went into the harem, and uh, at this point, I don't remember the harem. I took zero pictures of the harem. I didn't do a video. I didn't do anything. I, 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 I wasn't even there. I, 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 I think I spent 25, 30, 40 minutes in the harem. I have no idea. Um, but I wasn't even in the harem um, in my mind. And... Uh, and so after a while, I mean, I was just exhausted. I, you know, I, if there was a bed close, I would have been, I would have been unconscious. Um, and so not being there, I was, you know, standing, I guess, or whatever, but I felt a push on my shoulder. And then I looked and it was a policeman and, and he was saying things in Turkish and I didn't even understand. And I realized I had fallen asleep against the wall or I had passed out against the wall. And, and, and again, that, that five seconds that, that it had passed and I, I don't even know if I was on that wall for five minutes or 10 minutes or five seconds or 30 seconds. I, I don't know, it, it, I wasn't there. And so I realized now police are involved and now my heart was racing and now my, my danger sense was just beyond, beyond understanding. I had to go, I had to flee, I had to, I had to leave. This was, this was not okay. 
I walked to the exit. I asked the cop how to get to the exit, the police. And he said, you know, the line, the line, he pointed at the ground and you could see little arrows everywhere. And so I followed it and I got to the exit and I instinctively, I, I think my instincts, my uh, sixth sense, my let's just, God took over. And uh, I looked out the door without going outside and he was still there and he was talking to somebody. Um, there was a, 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 a dark man there and they were talking or whatever and I kind of pulled back. I realized then that the cop was, or the policeman was still behind me and so my heart was racing. I, it was like, you know, you were being shoved out the door and there was the wolf and I had to go. And so I looked out the door again and the, the one guy was walking away and Pierre, my guy, looked like he was going towards the bathroom. Um, and I walked out the door and I ran. I ran as fast as I could muster. My feet were heavy. I, I couldn't get through it. I, I went across a garden over bushes, over, over flower beds. People were looking at me running. And I, I'm sure my running was just this broken, stumbling, falling, running kind of thing. I, I ran, I ran, I ran. And um, after I cleared the garden and everything else, I don't remember anything past that. Um, I, uh, I came to in my bed, fully dressed, my shoes on in my bed, um, dressed. Um, and I, I don't know how I got there. I don't know how I got on the tram. I do remember the tram door. I remember racing. I saw the tram parked there and I remember running across the street and almost being hit by cars and people honking, but I dove into the door and it was trying to shut and I pushed it open and I got inside and I think it was just the commotion and the door hitting me and, and all that stuff and the horns, but I made it on the tram, but I don't remember the walk home. I don't remember getting to the room. I don't remember getting into bed. I don't remember anything. I woke up about five hours later um, and, uh, and I got up and my head was just throbbing beyond belief. And, um, and so I immediately got up, I checked my wallet, it was there. I checked my money, it was there. I checked my driver's license, they were there. Everything was there, my phone was there, everything was intact. I, I looked around, my bag was okay, my computer was still there, everything was still there. Um, somehow, some way I made it home safe. Um, luckily, um, and I, you know, whether it's sixth sense, whether it's my intuition, whether it's my, um, the little guy that sits on my shoulder that was directing me, whatever it was, I made it home and I was okay. And, uh, um, and then I thought I should go to the police. And I thought, you know, this is just terrifying. I, you know, it's Turkish police. I, you know, how does that go? I thought about going to the American consulate. I don't know how that goes. I don't know about any of this. It was just, I, I wrestled with it. Um, and so now it is uh, about a week later now since the incident happened and I have not gone to the police. I have not gone to the consulate. I haven't told anybody but Facebook and my mom and my son and family and friends. Um, and, uh, and I really wrestle with making this video. I, I, I don't want to cause myself problems in the future. I don't know if it was a syndicate. I don't know if it was a group. I don't know if it's a, a gang. I don't know if they have connections in Malta or other places or, you know, Greece or uh, Kalambaka. I don't know any of that. But there's a couple of things that are different. Um, and I think that's why I'm making this video. I think one is that he made mistakes. He didn't drug me enough. I'm, you know, six foot three and uh, 250, 255 pounds. So I'm a big man. That's one mistake he didn't count on two. The coffee that he bought me, it wasn't uh, just regular coffee. It was uh, Frappuccino. And so a lot of the foam, and I think a lot of the drugs that he put in the coffee were still in the cup. So I didn't get the full dose. Um, and three, um, I got his picture. You know, I'm doing videos. That's what Eric does, Eric Clark's travel videos. That's what you're watching this video on. Um, and so I have his pictures and I'm gonna share those pictures with you. And I'm gonna share the opening video with you that I was working on. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you were aware that, that it, this isn't a 
date rape drug. This isn't a bar drug. This isn't a um, woman only drug that it happens to men. And, and, and Pierre, if that was even his name, was a little guy, maybe five, eight, five, ten, you know, maybe 150, 160 pounds. Um, but he selected me. He selected a single traveler. He se selected, um, obviously, an American. He, uh, you know, I, I guess I stood out like a sore thumb. And uh, my education level has gone from this to through the roof. I, you know, I, I, I don't take drinks from anybody. I was at a mosque and an imam handed me water. I wouldn't take the water. I went and ordered food and they brought tea. I didn't drink the tea. I. My, my fear now of uh, the situation is impacted. My fear of traveling is impacted. I'm, I'm certainly much more cautious now than uh, in the last 15 years of my traveling. But I, I wanted to share you the pictures with you so that if, he ever, if you're ever in Turkey and this person is there, then at least you know. Um, and maybe, maybe somebody will see this that's from Turkey and know this person and can call the police or do something about it more than I'm willing to do um, in my travels. Um, but most importantly, I hope that I can educate you. You're not invulnerable. You're not um, impervious to these types of attacks. You're not, you're, I don't care. I don't care if you're seasoned travel and have been around the world a million times. I read online, other people have had this experience. A guy woke up in an alley um, and, he, and everything had been robbed from him. I think that if I would have drank that water, my life would have been more drastically changed than this. I think him and his buddy would have gotten me back to my hotel and stolen everything that I ever had, my Airbnb actually. Uh, I think that he, that it could have gone even worse than that. Um, would I have been alive? Would I have been dead? Um, I, uh, I don't know. Um, but it's a scary world. And I think as the COVID virus hits more people and more people are impacted financially and more people need money and more people need to make livings and the criminals are finding less tourists available that they're being more brazen and they're going further distances and they're willing to take bigger chances. Um, don't be the victim. Don't let this happen to you. Don't ever, ever take a drink that you didn't see get poured. Don't ever drink from a water bottle that you didn't buy. Don't ever trust that, that people aren't out to um, do bad things to you. It's not true. It happens. I, you know, I, I never in my lifetime would have imagined that this would have happened to me. It happened. I was drugged, I was on the verge of being taken advantage of. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Be smart, do your research, find out what the scams are, find out how to be safe. Don't get walking down some alleyway and realize there's no return from this alleyway. Don't get to a spot where you're being handed food or drinks that you didn't buy and, and, and don't know what's in them or um, any of those things. Thanks everybody for watching Eric Clark's travel videos. Thanks for watching this one particularly. This one's a little tougher. Um, please be safe. That's it. Thanks everybody. All right, so I'm here with Pierre. Say hi, Pierre. Hi. <laughs> and he's from France, and so we're gonna go in together. We met on the train, and so we're gonna go in. And so it's 150 to see everything. And so, uh, off we go and they have a harem inside and what else was there there was a harem and a in the main palace and then something else but uh look at that isn't that gorgeous wow amazing all right well i guess we'll go in i'm gonna take some more pictures of this this is pretty impressive look at the gates see how the gate is kind of uh Wow. Amazing. Ah, oh, the sun's out.